Hello, everyone. I am Toru Katsumoto. Last year, we held Technology Day for the first time to introduce Sony's technology. Today, I will give an update on Technology Day as well as speaking on the ways that technology is contributing to the Sony Group's diverse portfolio of businesses. Technology is a key element of both Sony's purpose and its identity as a creative entertainment company with a solid foundation of technology. In addition, technology is one of Sony's two most important material topics that support long-term value creation along with employees. While Sony operates a diverse portfolio of businesses, people are at the center of each and every business as relayed in Sony's corporate direction of getting closer to people. Based on this management direction, Sony is working to develop technology that will help us get closer to what motivates people, that is, what motivates our creators and users. Following the digitalization of content, our technologies accumulated by the electronics and image sensor businesses have been found to be useful across all business areas, including games, pictures, music, and financial services. For example, the high-definition video technology realized through TV and camera development is also utilized in game and movie content production. The Sony Group's diverse business portfolio has made it possible to connect engineers with a sight of each business, accelerate the development and evolution of technology, and generate true synergies in each business domain. I believe that this is a huge strength of the Sony Group that is not shared by any other company. Going forward, we plan to further enhance our topics for R&D in the areas of entertainment and finance. To that end, for example, in the area of entertainment, we have established R&D centers in places such as Culver City in the U.S., where Sony Pictures Entertainment is headquartered, in order to accelerate the collaboration between creators and engineers on the front lines of production. Approximately 10% of Sony's annual R&D expenses of 500 billion yen is used for corporate R&D. This ratio is consistently maintained each year from the perspective of financial discipline, and the topics for R&D are managed according to priority, including new, important topics. In addition, we have allocated 5% or less of corporate R&D expenses to long-term basic research topics so that we can respond flexibly to changes in trends in the medium to long-term. From the perspective of employees, we are also promoting the acceleration of measures with a strong emphasis on diversity and globalization. Since last year, we have engaged in dynamic rotation of key positions between our offices in Japan and overseas. Furthermore, we established a new R&D center in India this July in order to attract talented people. In China, we opened a new facility in Shenzhen in addition to our pre-existing facility in Beijing. We have also established English as a common language at this R&D center. Therefore, English will be used as the standard language for all important meetings and minutes to ensure a system that allows immediate sharing with all team members globally. Through these R&D activities, we will aim to contribute to society and the global environment in addition to contributing to Sony's diverse businesses that I mentioned earlier. Due to the recent spread of COVID-19 around the world, there is growing awareness regarding the safety and security of people and the sustainability of the environment. Furthermore, people can no longer gather in groups and there are limitations on producing high-quality film and music content as well as enjoying live performances and sporting events. Technology will be used as a method to solve these issues. This effort will be centered on three R technologies, which refers to the reality and real-time technologies that Sony has focused on until now, with the added element of remote. Reality technology, which delivers the ultimate in sound and video, has been an area of expertise for Sony until today. Additionally, we are creating new value by realizing in real time the entire process of understanding an input and then delivering it to the output side as information. I believe there will be a huge amount of value provided by realizing reality and real-time technologies remotely. 
Now I will introduce real examples of 3R technologies. This very presentation, in fact, is being filmed using a virtual production lab that we just launched this August. Through capturing and recording the image and 3D data of film studio sets as well as real locations, a composite image is faithfully reproduced on the crystal LED display in the background. When combined with live actors as well as physical props, it is possible to create images and video with reality that are indistinguishable from footage filmed in real sets or on location. In the field of sound, we have developed a technology called 360 Virtual Mixing Environment. It allows music engineers to recreate a studio sound mixing environment at home by utilizing virtual sound technology for headphones as well as a spatial sound technology such as environment and individual optimization. With this technology, it is now possible to remotely create intended sound environments such as that used in movie theaters. This technology was used for sound mixing for the feature film Ghostbusters Afterlife, which is scheduled to be released next year and received high praise from the sound engineer who worked with it. Using volumetric capture technology that was shown off last year during Technology Day, we held Ikimonogakari Volumetric Live as a live music streaming event this August. One significant evolution for this event was that everything was performed in real time, including modeling, rendering, and streaming. Having accomplished this feat of connecting everything in real time, we are one step closer to our larger goal of transmitting space itself. In the future, we aim to make it possible to see and speak to people in remote areas while shifting perspectives in real time, and to provide a video experience that allows users to share common space and exchange ideas remotely. AI is a technology that can be applied and contribute to all of the Sony Group's business areas, including sensing, financial services, and entertainment. Rather than competing in the area of developing new AI algorithms themselves, Sony's R&D efforts regarding AI are primarily focused on determining which AI algorithms are the best and easiest to use, depending on each area and the limitations of the time, and figuring out applications for Sony's diverse businesses. At the same time, Sony has started early-stage development on autonomous intelligence and deep learning, which are the mechanisms by which AI systems learn and develop autonomously, and these new technologies have started to attract attention as next-generation AI technology. As Mr. Yoshida explained at the start of this briefing, in May we announced an intelligent vision sensor equipped with an AI processing function. By enabling high-speed edge AI processing and extracting only the necessary data, we can achieve results such as lower power consumption, reduce communication costs, and shorten delay time of data transfer. In the same month, we also announced a collaboration with Microsoft on smart camera solutions and aim to provide new customer value by developing an optimal system that combines edge AI processing and cloud platforms. The Sony Group is also engaged in technology development to address a number of social issues. We have developed the fluorescent Kiravia dyes, a material for fluorescent reagents used to analyze the characteristics of tissues and cells, and are currently providing licenses to other suppliers and commercializing reagents. The reagents using Kiravia dyes are expected to be used in research areas such as regenerative medicine and immunology, utilizing flow cytometry as well as a broader life sciences field. Since entering the flow cytometry business in 2010, we have commercialized various flow cytometers by applying Blu-ray disc technology. Recently, the Vanderbilt University Medical Center in the United States used Sony's SH800 cell sorter to sort cells that form antibodies against the novel coronavirus and can be used as vaccines and antiviral treatments. Going forward, we will continue to contribute to society by leveraging Sony's technologies in the life sciences field, such as through accelerating research in advanced medicine. 
Mr. Yoshida spoke of creating space entertainment, and this is another example of a contribution by Sony's technology, specifically as it utilizes the technologies of imaging, sensing, and communication. As another example, we jointly developed SOLIS, a compact optical communication device that enables long-distance optical communication with JAXA. SOLIS, which uses Sony's optical disk technology, underwent testing in orbit at the International Space Station and succeeded in two-way optical communication with optical ground stations as well as in transmitting high-quality images. In order to realize a sustainable society, it is necessary to prevent inconvenient situations and to reduce inefficiency. To that end, it will be necessary to conduct sensing on various subjects on the Earth and transmit necessary information back to society at low cost at the right time through AI processing. By using such technology as Sony's high-function, low-energy system-on-chip, AI tools, and low-power wide-area networks, we will work to move from the coexistence of people and people to the coexistence of people and the environment that surrounds them. Today, I spoke about technology's contribution to the Sony Group's diverse portfolio of business. The details of the specific projects that I introduced today, as well as other initiatives involving technology, are published on Sony's technology site under the theme of Sony's Technology 2020. Please look forward to the further evolution of Sony as a creative entertainment company with a solid foundation in technology. Thank you for your attention.